Rena Squeaky Shoes. It's one of those family-owned places. Open 24 hours. The coffee is always burnt, but tastes familiar, comforting. They haven't been closed a full day since Cousin Gina's wedding back in 2007. Picture from which adorn the walls, nestled between the framed photos of other important events, reunions, christenings, even Grandpa Fernando's funeral. You can tell Rena's walk by her squeaky shoes. At 26, she's the second oldest of the third generation of Alphas to run the Neighborhood Diner. And for the 10 years she's worked here, her shoes have squeaked against the brown and white checkered tiles. Every pair. Something about the way she walks. She started after school and on weekends. But since graduating from Bunker Hill Community College four years ago, she's worked the morning shift seven to three. Her older brother, Lawrence, works the griddle. Meticulously organized eggs, bacon, linguiça, hash browns, each into their own neat quadrant on the grill top. Typically, they trade loving barbs back and forth throughout her shift. But today, they're not speaking because she once again has refused to let him teach her Portuguese. What would Grandpa Fefa say? He grumbles at her in the native tongue she refuses to master. She shrugs. She understands far more than she lets on, but there are customers to see. She greets everyone who walks in with a hug. Even though she's known most everyone here for years, knowing everybody's usual is more important than greeting them by name, more personal. A balding man makes himself comfortable in the corner table. He shakes off the weather and drapes his jacket over the chair across from him. As she squeaks over to the table, Rena smiles to herself and remarks that it looks like he's having breakfast with the friendly ghost. She's known him since he had hair. He used to bring his two kids there every weekend. Silver dollar pancakes and scrambled eggs with bacon. Silver dollar pancakes is at Yale now. And scrambled eggs with bacon is a junior high school teacher in Providence. Their father couldn't be prouder. He keeps a picture of the three of them in his wallet. Rena can always see it when he reaches for his credit card. She uses it as an opportunity to ask how they're doing. He comes at least once a week. Maybe her familiar face reminds him of happy times with his kids. The usual, huh? He nods. She scribbles, linguiça, egg, and cheese in big bubble letters on her notepad, paying no mind to the lines meant for orderly penmanship. 
she shoves the order slip onto Lawrence's line. Obrigadinha. Lawrence rolls his eyes. Rina grabs a big urn of coffee from its spot next to her favorite of the Alvis family photos. Grandpa Fernando and Grandma Luisa standing in front of the neighborhood diner in 1973. His arm over her shoulder, him beaming ear to ear, her as stone-faced as she was the day she found out Rena got her belly button pierced. Rena weaves the table, warming up guests' coffee. With each pour, she smiles at the people who have kept her family in business for 50 years. They smile back at her. They hope this place stays in business. The neighborhood has changed so much. She watches the fresh hot coffee mix, creating new nebulas and galaxies in each mug. Some light and sugary sweet, some dark and unwelcoming. Rena glides to the next table and creates another new galaxy in a businessman's coffee cup. Galaxy upon galaxy upon galaxy. As she meets each familiar face with comfort, grace, and a pair of squeaky shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 